Hey guys, my name is Jeff. Welcome back to Hack Cam Bass's Beginner's Guide to Bass Fishing. This is part five. Up to this point, we've gone out and purchased our brand new rod and reel. We've spooled it up with some fishing line. Now all that's left to do before we head out and do some actual fishing is buy some baits and tackle. Now, choosing which baits to use can be one of the more fun aspects of bass fishing because there's just so many different kinds to try and experiment with. But for those same reasons, it can also be a bit overwhelming. So for the video, we're gonna to briefly touch on all the basic categories of baits so that you can start to familiarize yourselves with those. And then we're gonna end by offering you an affordable shopping list of essential baits that's gonna help you get started. The first category of baits we're going to talk about are spinner baits. The spinner bait is the classic bass fishing lure. This is the bait that a lot of people use when first starting out. It's one of the more recognizable baits. It has the skirt and the elbowed wire with the blades attached to the end, which spin and give off vibration, which is one of the main ways it attracts fish. The reason so many people are introduced to bass fishing with the spinner bait is because of how user friendly it is. The bait attracts fish by itself with just a simple steady retrieve and it's also pretty easy to detect when a fish has actually taken the bait. With the vibrations the spinner bait gives off, you'll also start to gain an understanding of how important it is for an angler to be able to feel what the bait is actually doing while it's in the water. Besides all of that, the spinner bait just flat catches fish. It's a fish catcher any time of the year in just about any situation and every angler you come across will have spinner baits in their tackle box. Topwater baits might be the most popular and exciting category of baits in bass fishing. As the name implies, these baits are used on the surface of the water. This leads to some spectacular visual displays as bass often come out of the water to strike them. Topwater baits are a testament to a bass's aggressive and ferocious nature, and there are a few different kinds that we want to touch on here. First is the buzz bait. A buzz bait resembles a spinner bait, except that it has a very specific kind of blade that slaps the surface of the water as it spins during the retrieve. This gives off a buzzing sound, which is how the bait gets its name. Like a spinner bait, a buzz bait is a great introductory bait for a beginner since it's worked with a steady retrieve. Next is the topwater frog. Frogs are a common food source for bass, so a bait that mimics them makes a lot of sense. There are also different styles of topwater frogs, including hollow-bodied frogs like the Spro or Coppers, and soft-bodied frogs like the Stanley Ribbit or the Strike King Ragetail Toad. Popper baits like the Rebel Popar are another style of topwater bait. Popper baits mimic struggling bait fish, and they get their name from the way the bait is jerked forward in the water which creates a small splash that attracts bass. Other styles of topwater baits include prop baits like the torpedo and walking baits like the spook. The one thing to mention about all topwater baits is that usually this technique is reserved for times when bass are extremely active. This would include warmer water conditions like summer and during active feeding times like the early morning and late evening. As you might have guessed, Soft plastics are in fact made of soft plastic materials. The plastic allows for a very natural movement in the water and it can also be easily molded into different shapes, which is one of the reasons why you see so many different styles of soft plastics. You have worms, craws, lizards, creature baits, tubes, flukes, so basically way more variations than we can talk about in this video. But our primary focus when starting out should be the worm. There are countless variations of worms as well, but a very good starting place is the classic ribbon tail worm and also the stick bait, which we often refer to as the Cinco style worm. Worm fishing is a tried and true technique that can work in a variety of situations. Soft plastics are rigged onto a hook in various ways and also sometimes include a weight. We're gonna discuss how to rig soft plastics later in the guide. Also, classic soft plastic techniques like worm fishing are often considered a slower, 
more deliberate presentation to a bass, and these baits are often worked along the bottom. The other thing to say about using soft plastics is that detecting when a bass has actually taken the bait can be difficult at first, and an angler has to develop a feel for using them which can only come with practice and experience. Where there's soft baits, there's also hard baits. The lures in this category, which include crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, jerkbaits, and spoons, are all constructed with more durable, solid materials. There's quite a bit of variety in this category as well, but typically, these are faster moving baits that rely on quick movements to trigger a bass's natural instinct to react. Our main focus will be the crankbait and lipless crankbait, both of which are usually used to imitate bait fish moving through the water. Crankbaits have a lip at the front of the bait that causes it to dive down into the water when retrieved. This allows them to be fished at different depths, depending on the shape of the lip. And it also gives the bait a very pronounced wobbling motion as it moves. A close relative of the crankbait is the lipless crankbait, which as the name implies, is just a crankbait without the lip. These baits are often fished at very high speeds, which results in a sort of vibrating motion and they also usually rely on rattles built into the body to attract bass. The Bill Lewis Rattle Trap is a very popular lipless crankbait. In fact, it's so popular, you're often going to hear people use the terms rattle trap and lipless crankbait interchangeably. Because these are faster moving baits that can be fished at different depths, the biggest advantage in using crankbaits and lipless crankbaits is that it's a very efficient way to locate bass in the shortest amount of time. These kinds of baits can also be effective in many different conditions, but keep in mind that we're relying on a bass to react quickly, and in some cases to move great distances to strike them. The basic design of a jig has been around for hundreds of years. Today, jigs designed for bass fishing consist of a skirt and a hook attached to a weighted head where we tie the line to. They're also almost always fitted with a specially designed soft plastic piece that we call a trailer, which adds to the overall presentation. Jigs come in a variety of forms, and while they're exactly the same in their basic design, their functions can be very different. You have jigs that swim through the water and through cover that we fittingly call swim jigs. And you also have jigs that are hopped slowly along the bottom, one type being the football head jig. You also have newer jigs that have been modified with blades, like the chatterbait, which we're going to include in this category. The chatterbait essentially is a jig that vibrates like a lipless crankbait. With all the different kinds of jigs and all the different trailers you can attach to them, jig fishing is one of the more advanced, versatile, and effective techniques for catching bass. The last category of baits that we're going to briefly touch on are the swim baits. Swim baits can be made of either soft or hard materials, but what they usually have in common are designs that are aimed to accurately replicate the movement of a particular bait fish. This usually means intricately molded plastics, lifelike appendages, or jointed bodies that can closely mimic how a fish naturally moves in the water. The last thing we want to talk about is terminal tackle. These are items that in some way assist a bait's presentation, that would include things like hooks, weights, and swivels. Hooks come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. There are basic hooks for soft plastics, treble hooks, which are used on most hard baits, weighted hooks, hooks designed for topwater frogs, and many others. When you go out to purchase hooks for your soft plastics, 3 aught and 4 aught are very standard sizes. There are also bigger ones like the 5 aught and the 6 aught. Other techniques might even use smaller size hooks like the size 2, the size 1, or the 1 aught or the 2 aught. The measuring stick of all hooks is their sharpness. The sharper a hook, the chances of a bass coming unhooked during a fight are greatly diminished. Weights or sinkers do what their name implies. They add weight to a bait so it can reach deeper depths or add stability in strong currents or high winds. Weights also come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Alright, so those are all the categories of baits and tackle that we need to know about to begin with. 
So let's talk about that shopping list so that you can go out to your local sporting goods store and purchase only the essentials at an affordable price. First, get a spinnerbait. It's essential and every bass fisherman has them. Go with something like a 3 8 ounce or a half ounce spinnerbait. Choose any color you like and also don't worry about the blade types right now. For hard baits, grab a crankbait and a lipless crankbait. For the lipless crankbait, you can't go wrong with a classic Bill Lewis rattle trap. You might want to try a red color first and you can choose between the smaller quarter ounce or the larger half ounce. For a crankbait, I recommend a square build crankbait to start, which is typically operated at shallower depths. The Strike King KVD 1.5 or the 2.5 are great choices. Pick any color you like. For soft baits, we're going to grab two bags of worms. First, the classic ribbon tail worm, like a Berkeley Power Worm or a similar worm from Zoom. And also grab a pack of Cinco style worms. The Gary Yamamoto Cinco is the original, but don't be afraid of cheaper knockoff brands. Go with something like a 5 inch Cinco. Black and blue is a great color choice or anything with watermelon or pumpkin in the name. To go along with the worms, we do need some hooks and weights. Grab a pack of 3-0 or 4-0 offset worm hooks. This style is very easy to rig soft plastics with, as we'll see in part 6 of our guide. Also grab a pack of either 8th ounce or 16th ounce lead bullet weights to use with the worms. In the jig category, I recommend either a swim jig or a chatterbait, or maybe both. Both are very user friendly and very versatile, but both also need to be paired with a soft plastic trailer. A 3 8 ounce Strike King swim jig in bluegill color is a great starting point and pair that with something like a net bait pack a chunk. Or you can grab the original Z-Man's chatterbait and pair it with a live magic shad from Lake Fork Tackle. Trailer colors should complement the color of the jig or chatterbait. And let's not forget about top water. To begin, let's grab a Rebel Pop Bar, which is a great bait to learn how to use rod movements to work a bait. And finally, grab a classic buzz bait. A half ounce white or chartreuse booyah buzz bait is a great choice. All right guys, that's gonna do it for part five. Thank you so much for watching. We're up to the point, we're about to start heading out under the water and doing some actual fishing and hopefully catch that very first bass, which is the ultimate goal here. But first, stay tuned for part six. We need to talk about how to rig up our baits and how to tie knots. All right, once you reach the reel, it's time to thread the line through the line guide, which if you remember from last episode, this is the piece on the reel that moves back and forth and that helps distribute the line evenly onto the spool. The overall strength of the line, how much it stretches, and how visible it is in the water. The reels that we use in bass fishing, there's the bait casting reel, which we also call the bait caster, and the spinning reel. And what's nice about most spinning reels is you can switch the handle to the other side.